Welcome back to Stay Tuned. I'm Tony Angelo. This is my YouTube channel. And today we're digging back into my daily driver. This is a Lexus LX470 from 1999. I do everything with this thing. I've taken it on road trips. I haul my kids around with it. And it's been generally awesome. Um, essentially, it's a Toyota Land Cruiser that has a little bit more wood grain. It costs a couple more bucks back in the day. Um, I bought this thing and now it has 250,000 miles on it for about six grand. Drove it a ton. Uh, in the last episode, we took it to a place called Anthracite Off-Road Adventure Area up in Coal Country, Pennsylvania, and had a blast with it. We had just put on these fuel wheels and these Falcon Tire 33s on all stock, very tired suspension, and thought, we'll take it up there. It's a Toyota, it can't possibly break. We made it approximately a quarter mile into the gravel trails when it broke in every possible way. Um, this had auto leveling hydraulic suspension uh, when we got there, and a quarter mile later, it had ripped the line, sprayed all the fluid out, and was just sitting, uh, sagged out on essentially almost tires touching the fenders. It was a disaster. We did what we could for the day. We put a bunch of fluid in it. We had a ton of fun. It's a crazy, awesome off-road park. I've never been to one. And this thing did really well, except for the fact that uh, we had no ground clearance and we barely made it home just sort of dragging this thing on the ground. But that's fine because we're going to dig back into it today, do a proper lift on it, um, attend to a couple different things that make it even better on the street and on the trails. I mean, really, I use this thing 99% mall crawling, 1% off-roading. So it's time to get started. All right, so we're gonna be doing a little work on this Lexus today. You can see the suspension is fully out of hydraulic fluid. And by fully, I mean it, there's nothing left. It is sitting on the tire. So we are gonna back this thing up real quick and then we're going to get it up on the lift. So as you can see, this thing is dirty. We had this under probably three feet of muddy water and wheeled it all day in some nice Pennsylvania clay. But what we're really under here for is this. So where you can see I'm focusing the light is the broken uh, hydraulic line for the hydraulic suspension uh, and it broke right where the crimp is uh, we trail fixed it with a little bit of uh, tape and some zip ties and it got us through the day but we ended up having to use about four gallons worth of fluid to get us home uh, so today's project is rip out all these lines and get all this hydraulic suspension stuff out of here and tear this thing down for the new stuff. All right, so we got a lot of this grime off of here and Denver and I are gonna get after it right now, take this front suspension apart. We're gonna be replacing the upper control arms, the lower control arms, the shocks, which these ones are hydraulic. We're gonna be going to a Land Cruiser style, uh, you know, static shock with no hydraulics um, and yeah, let's get after taking this thing apart. What a mess. Uh, we got the first side taken apart. This is some quarter million mile rusty bolts and pretty much everything is uh, stuck on there. Looks like everything's original on here. So it's been on there for a couple, two, three years. But we got this side apart. Start tearing the other side apart. Denver's over here working on taking apart all the hydraulic lines underneath and the tanks and the hoses and the globes as they call them. And we are gonna get this ripped out. All right, so it's now like two and a half days later and the guys and me have torn off all of the stock suspension components, mostly the guys. Um, and here's what we're left with, almost nothing. Uh, you can still see a ton of this dirt and garbage clay from our off-roading experience. Um, but the deal is, is that nearly all of that hydraulic uh, raising, leveling system, whatever you want to call it, is gone. And it was more involved than we thought. There are lines everywhere. There's a pump at each corner and a main pump at the top. Um, accumulators, valves, sensors. I mean, it's crazy complicated. 
And so it just all got torn out. Some of the stuff has to stay with the body on the frame. You can't get every pump out, but 90% of this stuff is gone, which is great because we're just going to go simple, regular shock springs and torsion bars. Um, also, if you notice, upper arms, lower arms, all gone. It's all getting replaced. Everything had a quarter million miles on it. All the ball joints were shot. It was hammered. But this thing's going to be like a brand new truck now, and I'm super stoked because I picked up a bunch of great parts, and it's going to make this thing even better. The suspension package that we are going to put on my LX470, essentially turning it into like Land Cruiser, straight up suspension, no more hydraulic leveling nonsense. So I went out and got an Oman Emu lift kit. It's about an inch and a half lift um, from Slee off-road. I paid retail for this bad boy. It was like 1200 bucks. It has Old Man Emu parts, torsion bars, coil springs, and shocks. Now it's a little bit different than like your regular lift kit because essentially um, the coil springs and the torsion bars from the LX originally are not strong enough to just keep the car held up. It all relies on that hydraulic fluid being in the shocks, lifting everything up. So we're just ditching that all and going to now much stiffer rear coils, uh, much stiffer torsion bars, and a proper set of shocks. Lift the thing up a little bit so we can run our 33s, but still be decent for driving around. And it had 250,000 miles on it. All the suspension stuff was trash. So I went out to Dorman and they hooked up an entire set of brand new control arms. They've got upper and lower control arms. Again, Land Cruiser and LX stuff is all the same. And I got a set of rear trailing arms. These are the uppers. The lowers we're gonna yank out, put in some poly bushings and just slam them back in. And we should be good to go, you know, in another two and a half sweaty, disgusting, dirty, muddy, clayed up days. All right, let's put some stuff in though. The torsion bar goes right in the hole here. It's done. There it is. It's done. Just, just kidding. That's stupid. All right. So we've got the whole front end stripped down, rough killed wherever we needed it. It's looking still pretty much like the inside of a lake, but that's fine. We'll hose it down later. Uh, I'm going to start loading on the control arms first. These giant lower control arms, number one, then maybe the shock absorber, upper arms, spindle, torsion bars, the whole bit. Let's get started. Sweet. Hell yeah. I got some bolts. Okay, this guy goes here. All right, everything weighs 50 pounds. These are the Dorman factory replacements. There is a sleeve that stays in the car that has a bushing in it. We're just gonna let that rock because I'm a little bit afraid of trying to press the sleeve out on a car this rusty. But let's get started. Oh yeah. All right, so this is the Old Man Emu Nitro Charger Sport. I'm assuming it's a nitrogen shock. Uh, it's got a little bit of polyurethane bushings on top, similar to like an old school American style, which is going to get sandwiched around. Do, do, do. Mm -hmm. Gonna make sure everything is lined up. Get that top nut on. This has like a big washer that actually sits right on the metal. So you want to make sure you get everything right in that happy spot and we're looking good. This has a cool uh, dust cover that's plastic. I've never seen that before, but I'm sure if you're off-road and getting nuts and you wanna, I don't know, hit some light debris, it'd probably help you. Just up a little bit. Yep, there we go. Okay. Sick. Yep. Sweet, anytime you're working with a regular car that has rubber bushings, they don't have a huge window of movement. So you wanna make sure you tighten them up like these pivots in here with this thing at ride height. Now it's a torsion bar car, so we can actually like lift it up really close, tighten everything down and then put the torsion bars in. But either way, you can also just put the thing on the ground if it's coil springs, crawl around it and tighten all that stuff up for good. And then you know that the bushing is in a happy place. It can move up and down. If not, you tighten it all the way up like this and then you crank it all the way up. It's still gonna be under a ton of tension. It's gonna be unhappy, it could rip, it's a, it's a mess. I would think this is it, cast her back. You're good. You're good. Same thing here. We're just going to snug it up. These are alignment bolts. We had to cut the one out. So I got, these are from SBC. SPC. That's what I said. Definitely. 8,000, 2012. That's the part number. And uh, they're going to save our butt a little bit because the Toyota parts are discontinued. And these are eccentric bolts. So when you come in, Whoever's gonna do the alignment will adjust these to change caster and camber. 
get it all dialed in. We're doing an inch and a half lift. If we were going any higher, really, we would do a tubular aftermarket arm just so that it gets the ball joint angle correct. But with this, call it an inch and a half, maybe two, uh, these stock arms should suffice. These have self-locking nuts, so they're gonna be a little bit of a bear to get close, but once they're in, they're in. And that's nice. And that's how you do it. Just that easy. So now this comes off and you get a clip on there, right? Correct. Cool. And then we'll do, we'll fix cars and then we'll break them and then we'll do it all again. No more lake stuff, right? Honestly, I thought, I don't know why I thought it was a fine idea to drive straight into a lake. Like we got out there and I was like, oh yeah, I use this thing all the time. I carry my kids in it. It's my main transportation. The guy's like, you want to drive, in a, you want to drive straight through a lake? And I was like, of course. Of course I do. Why not? Why not? That's a great, you can do that. And I, see, what I forgot was that that dude unloaded his Jeep off a trailer. And we, we all drove there in this, like two hours away. It's all right. We still made it home somehow. I'm just tightening up the shocks. Old Man Emu is, that's a name I'd heard a long time and never used any of their stuff. I've always heard good things. I don't know what the deal is with behind, like it's the funniest name. Like yeah. you know, Old Man Emu, I don't know what that means, what the significance of, is of it, but I love it. I don't know. I love it. Emu is like a big giant. Listen, I like when people are like, you know, super fast racing team squad company, but I also like when they're like, Old Man Emu, oh. whatever, forget it. That's what it is. We got a farm, we got these uh, emus out here, let's do it. So one of my favorite ones like that, do you know ARC, the Japanese tuning company? It's, I've heard of them. It's beast. It's like they do, you know, small production, very, very high quality components. It's ARC, it means Abbey Road Company because they were big Beatles fans. No way. I swear to God. That's, That's what I've heard. That's hilarious. It's not a ton of adjustment in the bottom arm of this thing at all. All of the caster and camber adjustments are in the upper arms here. So I'm going to set them just essentially in the middle and then we'll get this thing over to get aligned. I might drive it around a little bit just to see how it feels, but essentially putting these eccentric in the middle of their range and hoping it works pretty good. So we've got both new Dorman upper and lower control arms in. Uh, the axle is reconnected, the hub and spindle, whatever you want to call it, are back on. The old man emu shock is rocking and rolling. Everything looks sweet. We tighten it all up at right height. Again, that's what you want to do. Um, and now we're going to put the torsion bars in. Torsion bars, if you don't know, um, obviously you can't see a, a coil spring here. There is none. Torsion bar is a long rod that takes the place of a coil or coil spring or like a leaf spring, depending on where it's being used. And essentially, it's just really tough to twist. And the twist of this thing is what gives your car the spring and holds it up. All right, so before we do the torsion bars on either side, um, because they're linked through the sway bar, we're going to do the same thing here. New lower control arm, new upper control arm, and new shocks, bolt the whole hub and everything back together, put the brakes on it. Then we'll go to the torsion bars. And then the front end is done. All right, control arms are on, shock is on, everything is tight, cotter pinned up, torqued to a million. Uh, and we are just about ready to throw the torsion bars on both sides. And the front are now done. Torsion bar time, and then we'll move to the back of the car. And I'll put this clip on too. All right, it's time to install the Old Man Emu torsion bars. These are stiffer than even Land Cruisers. Uh, and the way a torsion bar works is that it's spline. Some of them have hex heads on them, like old school Mopars. Um, and essentially, there's a specific double spline hole on each end of these things that I went through and marked with some white uh, paint, a little gymnasium there, uh, and then went down the torsion bar itself and did, did a straight line. So more or less, you bring this thing in, we're gonna line this up with the front anchor, 
go to the back, dial back five splines, knock it into the back, and now we're ready to adjust this thing. Uh, one thing you wanna do, taking torsion bars off, no matter what kind of car it is, is a nightmare, so make sure you either put a bunch of grease on the splines themselves so they don't get stuck in these sockets, but I've also already greased up the socket itself. But yeah, you don't wanna put these things in dry. It's a bad idea. All right, so as you can see, I'm gonna just line that thing right up, and then we'll go to the back side. So you see this, these splines are here. This will be in line, and I'm just gonna move over five splines and lock it in, which I believe is right there, but I'm gonna go back and count it real quick. One, two, three, four. It's kind of in the middle, but I think that's basically five. I like that. I've done the math. Checks out. Now we can get this out of the way. You're on, huh? I think you got it. We are good. Nice. All right, so five splines down puts us right, right there. So we're gonna snug that up in the front. You can tighten down the brackets for real. Uh, and then I will go in with the adjuster. So this is a torsion bar adjuster. Essentially it grabs part of the frame and uh, just pulls that torsion bar to give it the preload that it needs to make sure this car is at the perfect ride height. We'll do this, put the other one on the ground. Excuse me. We will do this to the other side, and then it's time to do the back. All right, so that's the adjuster. It's going to grab the torsion bar, pull it towards the frame, and give you the preload that you need. And we're not going to be able to really tell where this thing sits. We're just going to adjust it probably, you know, some random number, make sure it's the same both sides. Then we'll put this thing on the ground once we get the rear done and really dial in that front height. But torsion bars are pretty cool. Right, second side is the same, except it always takes half as much time because you've actually learned, hopefully, what the hell you're doing. Hey, quick break here just to announce that Stay Tuned finally has some merchandise. We've got the Angelo's Garage Gym shirt that just dropped, the new Stay Tuned Lightning Bolt shirt, stickers, a couple other things. They're all available at this Shopify link, so give it a click. Um, thanks for supporting. Grab a shirt, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, back to the show. Sweet, all right, so we've got the front end all done. Now it's time to go to the back, which hopefully takes less time. Um, and the plan here is to tear out all that stock, rusty, disgusting, hydraulic leveling stuff, and just add in a set of Old Man Emu beefy coil springs with their nitrogen shocks, and just tighten everything up. Since it's got a quarter million miles on it, I've got a set of Dorman upper trailing arms and sway bar end links. I also grabbed a set of polyurethane bushings for the lower arms. Uh, we'll get those on there. It'll just tighten everything up. I just want everything to feel pretty fresh. All right, let's go. Let's go. So we got that front suspension all done. Torsion bars are dialed in and I'm gonna tear the rear suspension apart. It's pretty basic. It is a parallel four link with a pan hard bar, coil springs and shocks. Uh, the shocks still have all the hydraulic lines going through them. So I'm gonna start tearing those apart and then we'll get uh, everything disconnected. We're gonna do new upper arms, new coil springs, new shocks, and bushings in the lower arms, and this thing will be good, it's new. So step one, tear the old stuff apart. There's probably gonna be some cutting, some grinding, some fighting, and some crying, maybe. Hopefully, Hopefully not for me. Nothing on this old Toyota has been easy, because it's just seen too much action. She's old and grizzled, but it'll work. We'll get it off. It's been a fight. So all I've done is shock lower mounts. There it is. Got that off. Shock lower mount off. I'm gonna raise the lift. All right, so that's our enemy right there. Uh, that's the top shock mount. And underneath that sea beastie uh, of a hydraulic line is some kind of disconnect, but I'll tell you what, we're probably gonna just get in there and break it or cut it, because I don't see anywhere to put a wrench on it. 
I wonder how it attacks. Like, I wonder if you take those two bolts out, if the shock will drop out. If the mount, if it's like through through the mount itself. Why even a bolt? It's just a round chunk of metal, crusty metal at this point. Five minutes later. A lot of different smells coming out of this thing. Hot rubber and oil <coughs> rust. <laughs> this smells like burning ass. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's the worst smell. That's <laughs> actually no. <sighs> Ouchies. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Suck. Eric. Christ. Well, yep. she's out. There she is. It's just that easy. Yikes. All right. That's something. That's what I was hoping for. See if it fits up the top here. Damn, Daniel, back at it again with the <sighs> All right, that's it. Just the grossest, absolute worst job of all time. She's out though. There it is. Please check. Sick. Ugh. All right, she's out of our face. Look at that. Beauty. Just gotta sneak it out. Go put this dumbass gas tank in the way. All right, so I'm gonna get up in here and just cut this line wherever I can. And then, you know, one day when we do the body on off frame restoration, we'll get the rest of this crap out. So I'll cut the line here and that'll hopefully let that thing fold out of the way. Man, how did, what do people do before sawzalls? These things are unbelievable. Ugh. Unstoppable. Could you imagine trying to do this with a hacksaw? <laughs> Good luck with doing this with anything but a sawzall. So all this stuff is now obsolete height sensors and all these line, you know, the line that's going up for that thing. This is all part of the auto height adjust system that we have now destroyed, removed, upgraded, canceled. There's gotta be a word for it, you know. Yeah, we're taking it out because it sucks. It was probably awesome for 20 years. The last two have been a disaster. It's all right. I'm excited about conventional suspension. Good old fashioned shocks and springs, baby. We don't need this suspension thinking for us. Find that bad boy on eBay later.
just what we needed and nothing else. Hell yeah. Get out of my life forever. Amazing. All right, now I'm gonna pull these upper arms off. We're gonna give it a quick scrub and knock all the scale off and then hit it with some rust killing, rust encapsulator paint. Have some lunch, let it dry, put the new stuff in. Sweet. I'm always looking for like a fun nickname for project cars when it fits. I was thinking we would call this thing the Rusty Lex, but that feels like kind of like a porn star's name. Like I done Rusty Lex. So maybe we'll skip it. I don't know. It's stupid. Forget it. Forget it. Just doing upper arms, then we're gonna knock the flake off, the scale off, and uh, paint it up. Last arm is out. Now we're just gonna take five minutes, brush off the thick scaly rust on the frame, hit it with some rust encapsulate and paint, let it dry, eat some lunch, slap all the new stuff on, and hit the trail. I mean, you know, street. Scrubbed it, knocked it all off with an air gun, any loose crap. Denver is in here. Knocking off, just laying down some rust encapsulator from Eastwood. All you gotta do is knock the scale off and then lay it down. Denver, speaking of porno names, dude, look, that's his real name right there. It's not my real name. It's not? No. Your real name is Lexington Steel. I knew it. Yeah. Oh, damn. I knew it. All right, we've got the rust killing paint pretty much dry. Denver did a nice job there. Uh, we're just trying to save as much metal on this thing as we can. I'm gonna start with a set of brand new Dorman rear upper trailing arms. Throw on those old man emu shocks and springs. This thing will be ready to rip in no time. Good. Tap. There you go. Beauty. In the hall. It's just that easy. Yeah. We're just gonna have to. Yep. There you go. Beautiful. Probably yep. put a zip tie on there. I guess. All right, let's go. Tighten it up. So these are rubber bushings. Anytime you're tightening up a rubber bushing, like we talked about, we're gonna put this thing down to ride height crawl underneath here and actually tighten it up for good. We're just gonna snug it on for now. Right, this is the Old Man Emu Nitro Charger. Just a nitrogen regular shock. It's got no hydraulic nightmares going on with it. Its job is to just dampen the movements like a regular shock. I love it. Plus it's yellow and it has this cool hard dust cover. It's not gonna rust. All right, it goes right in place. That little washer's gonna center itself. Same over here. 
on top. I guess I'm gonna load them in one at a time. That's tough, dude. This is all by feel. Okay, whatever that is, it's good. Sorry, fingers. Yep. You're married to the streets now. <laughs> Sweet, wheels and tires are on. I just gave the torsion bars a few cranks, essentially. If it sits halfway decent, I'll drive it around for the weekend, let everything settle, come back in, get the height style perfectly, take off the alignment, this thing will be ready to rip. Lift has, the lift has had enough. Had enough. Oh no, more. Let's just go right to more. Right? Oh yeah. Yep. Several months later. Okay, so all the old man emu and dormant stuff is on there. Uh, it's lifted up. I got it aligned. I took it for a little rip, and after one day. Uh, daily driving this thing, I started to hear a hum in the drive line for sure. Um, and I just went through it. I noticed, you know, this is after like a week of driving essentially, that there is some leakage on this front CV axle. And more or less, as you raise the car up, uh, the axle angle gets more extreme. And these things are only happy uh, at a certain range of articulation. And more or less, Slee will tell you we recommend a front diff drop. Right, and I'm here to tell you, I think you should probably buy it. It's like another 250 bucks um, because if not, I think the axles are gonna explode kind of like mine did. So this one's puking, old gross grease. At this point, I'm gonna put in the diff drop and see if this thing is happy uh, and we'll go from there. So it's pretty basic, right? It's a, an all wheel drive, independent front suspension. So you have your front differential, it's braced up in here. Uh, to the frame and to this crossbar and they just have a bunch of different spacers and a dip down crossbar that allows this thing just to sit down I think another inch and get us back into spec where it's going to drive happily and hopefully that hum goes away too All right, so I'm not running The fiberglass under tray So step one for me is start start supporting this front diff step one for most people just to take that under tray off, but I already did it when I changed the alternator like a year and a half ago, and then I threw them out. Jeez. Everything's got that sandy crunch in it. That's how you know it's good. Okay. Now we gotta yank off this crossbar here. It looks much bigger. And then we can pull this out. Now that we remove that differential support. So essentially, they make a cross member with a deeper offset. It's going to hold this support down lower, make room for that thing to drop down, and then all of the supports that bolt straight up into the car. Are just gonna get longer bolts and big spacers to go above the diff to space it down. All right, here we go. Bringing this thing down. A little shimmy. And she's home free. All right, here she is. You can see this lead piece has a much deeper offset. I think it's going to drop it, I think, about an inch. Plus, it's got this cool S in it. You got that going for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to just install this new bent cross member with factory hardware. 
and will allow us to eventually lower all this stuff down. Right, it says to torque these to 50. So, my highly calibrated arm feels like uh, 36, 50. Perfect. Beep, 50. I'm one of the new electronic ones. Beep, borp. I'm a torque robot. <laughs> Listen to me very carefully. All right, that's it. And then essentially, these are the spaces that are gonna drop down those two vertical bolts. And what's cute is you take the longer bolt from the back. Now it's long enough for the front. We got one more big nut somewhere. I got two in my hands, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now you take your factory bolt. This is, I guess, 20 mil. Comes with three spacers, they all look to be exactly the same. And now lower this front diff down. Making these axles happy. I put that rubber spacer back in the top because I think you need it for this sleeve. And I'm gonna put a little bit of anti-seize on this thing. All right, so now I'll wiggle the back one on and snug them up together. So new bolt, old washer, we love to recycle here, it's our favorite. All right, I'm going to stack this on top. Obviously a nut that is captured in the frame is the last thing you want to, you want to cross thread. Now if you recall, this thing was not our friend coming out, but we're going to try to do better going in. There she is. 137 pounds. Foot pounds to be exact. Wicked tight is another way to say it. Right before my hernia starts to hurt. Right there, dialed it in. Perfect. That's just about it for this Slee front diff lowering kit. Obviously I'm gonna have to check back in, see if the CV join is leaking over here out of the boot. Um, but it might be time for some new axles anyway. Would have been nice to do that while we redid the entire front suspension, but you know. One thing at a time. All right. That's oh, tight enough. There she is. All right, so we've got this thing pushed down most of an inch, I would say. And that should help everything work a little bit more happily. Sweet, all right, it's back on the ground. So we've got our Falcon 33s, fuel wheels now. Old man emu lift, it's like two inches. Um, plus that sleeve front diff drop kit. This thing should be ready to rip. Let's go test it out. All right, so we're out in the LX470. We've got the dormant arms on the front and the back. Old man emu, uh, shocks, 
springs, torsion bars. I, you know, a torsion bar essentially is adjustable in the front. So they say if you stay around two inches in the front, you can get away with a stock upper control arm. We have done that. We got this thing aligned. Um, I guess stock has a little bit of a rake, but I got it kind of leveled out. Um, and my boys, um, local shop, alignment shop, were able to get it very close. Um, so it's happy, a little bit less caster than I'd appreciate. But it, I keep telling myself that it's not a race car, um, but it drives good. We're on, the, we're on the road now. And honestly, it feels very tight. It feels very controlled. It's not quite as like cushy as it was in Lexus form, uh, but it's nothing to complain about. It soaks up the bumps, feels really good. I'm really liking it. One thing I will say, 33s on here, this thing only makes, I forget, 220 horsepower or something, 240, not a lot, and not a lot of torque. It's really like, you can hear, it's labor, it's just chugging. She's working her, working hard just to get up a little hill. But solid car, still pretty happy. Um, and, you know, back on the street, ready to rip. All this stuff is really good. I think that's actually really affordable. What do we pay with everything? It was like the whole lift kit, shock springs, torsion bars, and that diff relocation, I think. Well under something. two grand, yeah. sixteen hundred, something like that. Not bad at all. Thirteen and three, so called sixteen. Pretty damn good. One problem I have, being my own person, uh, being this doofus that I am, is that I drive most everything like a little bit of a race car, and I'm like, you hear it? You gotta keep it in first gear and it jams. But like, I remember that it's like extra tall SUV. But even so, like, round turn, pretty solid. You know, the Falcon tires still have a ton of grip. And I really like this truck, so I'm going to keep it around for a while. I'm going to do a couple more stupid small things, but it's pretty close. I might do some racks out back, maybe a tube bumper out back because the stock one's falling off. Steering wheel is shredded after a quarter million miles, and it's like leather plus wood. I don't know. I'm sure somebody makes one. But it's a really, really good daily driver. See that? Big bump, no problem. All right, we're gonna test our off-road prowess. Got our buddy Zach in the very back. Zach, he might be doing some, some scrubbing. Which way do we go, up the hill? Yeah, let's go up the hill, right? I can't really tell. It feels here. amazing though. Yeah. Oh yeah. We are in it. I don't really know where we're in, but we're in it. Deep. That looks like trees. Oh, oh does it go over here? Yeah, I think so. I heard we got down to like a lake at some point, right? Heard from the guy with the thing that one kid, yeah, one kid with the some kid shut up. Cherokee, Cherokee dude was like, "Yeah, it's great." Oh yeah, there you go. Which way? Over there, I guess. All right. That looks like something. Oh yeah, she's gonna eat that up. Right, let's put this thing back on the street. Oh God. Here we go. All right, that's enough. That's enough for me. So this thing worked killer. It's awesome off-road. It's even better on-road. Uh, we tossed all of that junk, the uh, auto leveling, hydraulic suspension stuff. It was brutal to tear it off, but it was so worth it. This is just now straight torsion bars, coil springs, and shocks, and this thing feels awesome. It's ready for another quarter million miles of honestly mostly driving to the beach and mall crawling. But in the off chance, once a year we take it off road, it's ready for that too. All right, that's it for this episode of Stay Tuned. I will see you guys in the comments or on the highway maybe. Give me a honk.